So we'll do two of them in here, and then we'll adjourn to the lab. I'll talk about Photoshop. But uh, the bulk of this time, I want you to spend uh, experimenting and playing around. Try things out. Show your friends what you did. And learn from what they did, and so on. Um, so I'm just going to jump right in, and the first one I'm going to do is Picasso. And I talked a little bit about it last time, and I had a little bit of trouble getting with it. I realized what I did wrong. <clears throat> I made the option to import pictures as opposed to scan the folder and add the folder to the list of things to be scanned. With Picasso, <coughs> You can set up folders that Picasso constantly scans for new images. That way, you don't have to add them to Picasso. All right? You add an image to that folder, it gets added to, to Picasso. So, let's go in, and here's Picasso. Here's where we were last time. I was clicking in Import, and typically that's used if you want to bring in something from a camera or a thumb drive or take it from someplace else and put it uh, in a folder on your system. Normally what we would want to do would be to say, to add a folder to Picasso, then I can go in and I can specify which folders I want to scan. So there's the sample folders sample pictures folder, I can choose to scan it always, to scan it once, or to never scan it. I'm going to choose to scan it always. So as, as long as we, uh, if we put files in here, they'll automatically appear in Picasso. So there we go, and there's our images. All right. Um, let's see. I thought there was supposed to be one more. Let me look real quick. Question? JPEG real quick. Okay. And so it gets added to Picasso automatically when it just gets added to that folder. So let's go look at some of the things that you can do with this. One of the things we mentioned that you can do is you can fix red eye. That's a very common problem. So if you double click on this image, you'll notice there's a whole list of things that we can do. And one of them is just the red eye fixer. You click on that, and it's asking you to click and drag your mouse over the red eye portion, and boom, there it goes. And that red eye is eliminated. All right, yeah, pretty nifty, huh? <laughs> Um, some other things, too. Retouch. For example, let's say this kid is embarrassed about the front wall in his letters. All right? He shouldn't be, but let's say he, uh, he is. We can go into this retouch mode, and we can go in and, let's go make a smaller brush. I'm going to go and It's gone. All right. Pretty nifty. All I did essentially is I clicked on it, then I drug it to what kind of thing I want to replace it with. All right. And I can undo it or I can apply it. I can go and undo that and it's back. Click on it again and whoops, I gave him two. Oops. That's not good. Try this again. There we go. And it's gone. Um, 
One thing interesting about Picasso, when we're done with this, we can go and we can finish editing this, uh, go back to library. We can always click on this and say undo all edits and get back to the original. Picasso actually holds, in addition to the original, it holds a file of the changes that you've made. Um, and therefore you can undo them at any point. Um, I still would suggest having a copy of it. Uh, you can go up here and file, export the picture to actually go and put out a completed version of the, the picture with all the changes. All right. Now, one thing that we're going to talk about again, and this sort of is along the same lines, is there's a format that these applications use internally to store things, and there's an application that the public can see. So, for example, um, with Photoshop, we'll see PSD files. With GIMP, we'll see, I forget the, the extension for those. We'll, we can look that up. We have to store it in a standard format so other things can use it. All right? That's an important thing to keep in mind. By standard format, I mean JPEG, GIF, PNG. Just like you went and you had your Audacity files that were .aup along with a folder, you had to go and export that as an MP3 to send your podcast to me. Some other things you can do with this. Well, we can straighten the image. Let's imagine that the jellyfish is supposed to be tilted. We could straighten it. All right. I'm feeling lucky does the automatic uh, uh, correction for lighting and color. Auto contrast fixes just the color. Auto color fixes just the color. In addition, you can go in and you can fill light, which brightens up, adds sort of light to the brighter areas, or sort of fills in the shadows with light. Highlights can make the bright areas pop a little more. This can make the dark areas darker. Color temperature, I think we talked about last time, we can go and give it either a bluish tint or a yellowish tint. That's not really relevant here under the sea. If we look at other pictures, we might be able to, to get a better look. Then we have a whole bunch of other things. We can increase the saturation of it. Saturation is like the, the, the vividness of the color. We can make it black and white if we want. Sepia. Uh, we can make it a certain tint. So we can make it, we can play with the, the tint of it. Graduated tint, filtered black and white. A lot of different options here. And again, I would suggest that you play around with it to find um, what works for you. Let's go back to the library and let's go change this photo. Because this photo um, is an example of white balance being off. All right? If you look at this photo, the blanket is supposed to be white. But because it was taken under artificial light and the settings of the camera and so on and so forth, it has a yellowish cast to it. Well, we might want to correct that. And you can correct that in Picasso by doing this. Going into Tools. Well, you could either do the auto color where it guesses. Not a bad job. Or you can go in here and say neutral color picker. What the neutral color picker is, is you pick something on your picture that's white or black or gray for that matter. But typically you look for something that's white and you click on that. So I'm going to click on this and say this over here is supposed to be white. And based on that being white, it, it adjusts the colors to make it look more natural. That looks a heck of a lot more natural than, than that does. And again, that's known as a white balance. And, and the reason for that is artificial light or different kinds of light sort of tint the color differently. Now we can go and we can maybe, let's see, 
play around with this. Maybe make the picture give it a slightly warmer look. All right. And so on down the line. Give a little bit of a glow to it. All right. Um, other things that you can do down here, you can rotate the picture if the picture is oriented the wrong way. You can crop the picture. Oops, not that way you can. Um, let's see, where is the choice to crop it? pick a standard size, like standard picture sizes, or we can make our custom size. And we can crop it. Alright, so that's a quick tour of Picasso. The, the other thing that this has is it gives you the ability to organize your pictures. It won't make a physical copy of the picture, but it will sort of put it in different albums. So, for example, I could create a flowers uh, album, right mouse and say, add the album, create a new album, flowers. And then I could go in and add my other flowers pictures to that. Alright. So now I have three pictures in the Flowers album. I could take the same pictures and put them in another album. And it doesn't make an extra physical copy of it. It simply points it to there. So let's say, for example, that this was taken in Australia. Let's pretend this is an Australian flower. So I could right mouse on this and say add to album, create a new album, Australia. And I could add that and the little koala bear to my Australian album. Again, it's not like it makes a copy of it. It's simply pointed to in two places. And that's very valuable. We talked about last time about how a lot of times people have tons of uh, digital images. So it's very hard to remember and find everything. You know, you might go on vacation in, to Florida and, and visit your relatives. Well, where do you put that? Do you put that in a My Trip to Florida folder, or do you put that in a My Visit with Relatives folder? Well, you can do both. You could have, you could bring those in, physically put the, the, the images somewhere, and create two different albums. That way it's like, oh, where's the picture of Aunt Sue? I can go to the Relatives folder. Oh, where's that picture of Orlando? Oh, I can go to the Florida picture. And finally, where's the picture of Aunt Sue in Orlando? Well, you can go to either. All right, that's it for Picasso. On to the GIMP. The GIMP is the one that I must confess I probably use more often than um, others. We'll take a quick tour of it and um, show you where some of the things are and go from there. Let's start with the penguins. And I will say open with, I will not say open with GIMP. I hope this has GIMP installed. There we go. <clears throat> the GIMP, as I mentioned before, is more of an industrial strength sort of tool. You saw how Picasso, with Picasso you're capable of doing the very common sorts of fixes that you want to do. Fix a red eye, crop it change the auto balance, change the contrast, and change the lighting a little bit. But you can do a lot more with, with the GIMP. It is a little harder to use. That's sort of the downside of it compared to Picasso. We'll just wait a minute here for this to load. It says it's not responding, but I don't believe it. It says that it's, it's, it's taken too long, yeah. 
There's our little toolbox. And I'm going to go File, Open, and I'll go in and find um, those pictures. And let's grab the picture of the penguins. All right. One thing that's a little disconcerting at first with the GIMP is you don't get like one giant window that everything's in. You get these little dockable things that you can move around. And that's nice. It also can be a pain in the butt. What it's really good for, though, is really high-end graphic designers oftentimes will have like a dual monitor, right? They'll have a gigantic monitor here where they can put the image up. And then they'll have a second monitor that they can have all their toolbars and stuff. And they can work on that and see the image in there. Um, we don't have that luxury, so I will go in and I'm going to be using the layer one in a minute, so we'll leave we'll leave that up. And here's our toolbox. Is there a way to like dock it all together? I don't think so. No, or, I'm not sure. Let's see. If you could, you would go in and sort of. Usually, if you like jam it on the toolbar, you can do that, but apparently not here. Maybe you need to make the middle of that thing a little bigger. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I'm not aware of it if there is one. All right, let's go through some of the basic, same sort of basic fixes are in here, although they may not be worded quite as directly, and there, there are probably less automatic functionality. Uh, this is, you know, assuming that you know what you're doing, so they're not going to do a lot for you. Here is uh, hue and saturation. I can, for example, if I want to make the colors more vivid by sliding the saturation bar over. Or make them less vivid by sliding it over there. All the way over, of course, is black and white. Here's a little bit of color and so on. One of the best pieces of advice that I've heard is, a, 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 how do you want to say it? A nice, quick and dirty thing to make most of your pictures look better is to increase the contrast and decrease the saturation. So, you can go here, contrast, on this picture. Now, this is a well-taken picture. Uh, this isn't your average, ordinary pic. But I can go and I can increase the contrast some, and then I can go and decrease the saturation. Now, it might not be obvious in that because that was a pretty good picture to begin with, but when I do it with just like plain old sort of garden variety snapshots, it oftentimes makes them look uh, better. You have a variety of ways that you can select stuff. Uh, you can do a rectangle select. So you could go and select everything in there, and then you could go and, if you wanted to, change just the contrast of that area if you wanted to. You can also use a, a round way to select and do the same thing. You can also go and use this lasso to kind of draw your own selection. There we go. And you could go and just do the contrast or any anything really. Let's go and do the saturation of just that piece. All right. There's a lot under the colors uh, that we, um, to do some sort of standard fixes. There is, um, you know, these you can play with. Posturize, what that does is it reduces the number of colors. And you can do this sometimes for good effect to kind of give it a, a different look. So, for example, there we've reduced a number of colors. And you can get some sort of, you know, more artistic look to it if you want. But that's what posterize means. There's a whole bunch of filters, and I encourage you to play with these to your heart's content today. The reason I say to do that today is because a lot of these don't really have any real use in real projects. And they're fun to do, get them out of your system. All right? <laughs> For 
example, we could go in here and give it the look of a cartoon. And what it will do is it will sort of give in the, well, that wasn't very obvious. It sort of gives sort of a hand-drawn feeling to it. Or, that's clothify. It will, it will give it like a cloth texture. It will make it look like burlap or, or whatever. Uh, cubism will, will render this in a style like the cubist painters did. All right. I made it real big so it would be obvious. Um, let's see, and we can go down the line. Some of these are fun to do, but again, not necessarily. Um, mosaic, you can go make a little penguin mosaic. Eraser tool. I'm gonna make it really big. And I'm gonna start erasing this penguin. Wait a minute. The penguin isn't disappearing. What's wrong? Well, no. I'm on the right layer, but I'm erasing the penguin from the top layer, so the penguin on the bottom layer shows through. Well, guess what? It's the same layer, or it's the same penguin rather. So therefore, and to prove that to you, I can go here and turn off that layer. Just like in Flash, you can turn off layers. Notice that we get that little indication, which means that, yeah, I really am erasing that, that penguin. So erasing is one way to get rid of stuff. The other thing you can do is you can, you can select by color. And I could say, well, give me everything that is this color. Unfortunately, it also give you that in those penguins as well, in this particular case. Now, so that really wouldn't be useful for our, our case here. Um, what I could do, though, is I could go in here and I could really explode this. So I see it very magnified, so I could do a very thorough job of it with the eraser make a smaller eraser. I'll go and erase that. 
and see with this I can go right up to the edge and get rid of it. Takes a little bit of patience, but it's not really that hard. One nice thing is if you sneeze or something, whoops, you got the undo, right, to go and undo it. So let's pretend I did the whole thing. All right. Now what I can do is this. I have this uh, Layers dialog box. If you don't see this, by the way, go up to Windows and you can pick the Layers box. I can then, since I'm looking at this layer, I can go and make the saturation of that be all the way up. Make it black and white. Click OK. All right. Now when I turn that layer back on, the color from that penguin underneath it shows through the transparent spots in this. So that's a, a cool, neat way to do that. You want to put someone in this picture. Let's put let's put a giant koala in this picture. All right. What can I do? Well, I can go in here and I can say in open as layer, and I can find a picture. Well, that's a little bit too giant, right? All right, that's, that's huge. So what I'm going to do, first of all, I'm going to make sure that there is transparency. There's, there's an alpha channel on this one so that I can erase it. All right. Then I'm going to go in and under layer, I'm going to resize the layer, scale layer. Let's make it uh, maybe 400 pixels by 300. Okay, that's a lot better. So I could go and let's make it a little smaller still. Yeah, thank you. Isn't it funny how you can just like totally lose your train of thought? There we go. Let's put the qual over here. All right. Now, what can I do? Well, if I want the qual to be black and white, I can go and I can go and hit the um, saturation of this guy and make them black and white. Or I could do other color balancing sort of things, right? To um, to even it out. Like if one is a dark picture and one's a light picture, I can make the lighter one darker, the dark one lighter, or somehow find something in the middle. But then what I can do is I can go in and I'm going to move up the view. And I can go and start removing pieces of this koala picture so it looks like kind of like the koala's peeking over the horizon. So I can go and start erasing stuff from there. Or I could go and do a select by color maybe. Be careful when you do that because you get that. There's also a select by path where you can draw a path around that. But at any rate, I can go in and get rid of that. I went a little bit too far over the year. And I can get the effect of the panda, or panda koala looking over the, the uh, horizon. Or I can be Dr. Moreau and put a panda head <laughs> on a penguin. <laughs> 